starts talking, you know, I start telling me, you know, it, 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 it violated, you know, the, um, the Budapest Memorandum in 1994, and you, you needed to do it politically, and he just is going like this. What? Nichevo. Et a zimla. Et a narod. And, and, and what he said was, whoa, whoa, stop. You're messing, my, you're messing with my mind. This is, this is Russian land. This is Russian people. And that's the elemental argument um, on Crimea, uh, certainly. It could be more contentious, in, uh, more contentious in eastern Ukraine, which is more complex. Um, um, and I'm not saying that Russian's right. But 80% but of the Russians have that view. To hell with the politics. This is our, 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 uh, our land, and we're redressing a historical right. If you remember, Khrushchev uh, gave it to uh, Ukraine while under the Soviet Union. All right, so all of this was about um, arms to Ukraine. I don't like it, but they need a chance to survive. And they also, unfortunately, as, as, um, as much as there is a corrupt corruption issue, uh, they need, badly need more money because that company, excuse me, that country uh, could financially implode in the next year. <coughs> all right, third, um, in all of this, we have to, and it's really, really devilishly complex thing, we are honor bound as part of the Washington Treaty and Article 5 NATO to protect these three countries, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, that came into NATO in 2004. Russians were quite grumpy about it, uh, and they, they, they felt they got steamrolled. Um, but it happened. And, and, and these countries deserve to be in NATO. They are, they are, they are fundamentally democratic. They are, um, they're, they're good citizens in the EU. They do have some problems with the Russian minorities but they are not show-stopping problems, and they're being worked, but they are pretext, potential pretext for Russian hybrid misadventures. So, <coughs> and then you've got Poland, which is a wonderful NATO ally, and um, came in in the first uh, tranche, um, and, and you've, got, you've got allies that are really, really nervous because, my God, we've got a resurgent Russia that's acting kind of postal right now, and, we're, we're, and we don't want to be next in the menu. And, and we will tell the Russians to a blue in the face, guys, between, between these three countries, there must be 15,000 military. And, and Poland's military isn't that large either. And the US Army is down to two and a half brigades in Germany. Remember, we got all our tanks out last year. So we were moving away from this, this thing, but now what's going on? Because of, of our obligation, rightfully so, we have, to pro we have to buttress our allies. And we can't leave them out to hang. And we have to send a firm me message to the Russians, don't do it. And if we do get soft on them, and, and for what something happens, then you end up um, risking the integrity of the entire NATO alliance. So this is, this is something to watch um, US forces and other Forces were in exercises uh, in these areas. And I'm going to talk about a Russian perspective, too, because we need to have this. Um, and this is, this, is, this is very, very important. And there are going to be some tra there are trainers in Ukraine, and, um, which Russians hate. And um, so, so, so we support our allies. We have to. It's a difficult situation when all of this happened years ago. I don't think anybody expected Russia to be so resurgent and revanchist as it is being today. By the way, there are a lot of good people in Russia. I need to say that, okay? Um, and, and I've got to believe that there are a lot that are troubled by this. Uh, but again, um, the, uh, the government, um, excuse me, I use the word regime, um, is clearly uh, driving the train on this one. All right, let's talk about geography, all right? because. Um, I know I'm going to go a little bit like one-on-one, uh, History 101, and please forgive me if I'm, I'm, I'm talking uh, too simplistically, but I think it's so important. Um, let me get some water. My cough went away for a while. 
Um, pardon? Yeah, yeah. Um, this country, Russia, first, and, and I'm going to try to get at the psychology, the psychology of the Russians, and why, from my perspective, and these are insights and perspectives, I, I might not be totally right, but these are perspectives, and I think a, a number of people would share. First of all, look at the vastness of this country. Look at the absolute vastness of this country, and look at its neighbors. Russia is in a tough neighborhood when you go back to history. And, and you know, out of here in the east erupted the Mongols in the 1200s and slaughtered the initial Rus, the original Russian city-state, and put the entire city to the sword. So they have a lot of mental baggage from the east, though they of late have had a pretty intelligent uh, I believe, practical transactional foreign policy with China. They're not friends, but neither of them want problems with each other right now. Both have bigger fish to fry in different places. Uh, rational Russians, not just the propagandized Russians, believe that, that, um, that the West took advantage uh, of Russian weakness um, in, um, in the 90s uh, to um, to um, push NATO enlargement. Um, by the way, I'm a, I'm, I'm a complete believer in nation, uh, NATO enlargement because it should be the right and the aspiration of every country that wants to be in an alliance system that is peaceful, uh, that makes its reforms, civil military, the uh, a civil military control of military should, should, should be able to aspire. So, so when I say the Russians have real problems with it, that doesn't mean I'm anti-NATO. I've been a NATO officer my whole life. Um, and, and one of the brilliant things about NATO, and I would try to remind our Russian friends, and many of us do, that not since 1974 with Cyp Cyprus and Turkey has any NATO ally gone to war with each other. And, this, and if you remember in the lifetime of our grandparents, that whole area that NATO encompassed was just the most horrific, bloody war zone in modern history. And there hasn't been anything in 70 years since Cyprus. And, and, and I tell the Russians that. Do you th would your security have been better if you had a bunch of countries spinning loose, looking for own alliance systems, and looking for ways to get blocks to defend themselves? Um, so it is a lively debate. So there is a, a um, I believe it was the right thing to do, but, uh, but the Russians uh, uh, viscerally believe that, um, uh, that they were outmaneuvered, if you will, outplayed on NATO. Uh, and I try to, again, tell them that it was actually a good thing. Josh, how, how am I on time? All right, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I just feel like I'm, I'm being pedantic. You wind him up, he can out talk. I'm being me. pedantic. <laughs> Scary. Uh, uh, we do, I, we do want to get some. Questions. Yeah, I mean, where, where, where are we at the one hour mark? Uh, we're at it. We're on the one hour mark. Yeah, Holy it. Lord of mercy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to wrap this up in five minutes and open it to questions. All right, I want to get into history though. It's, it's so important. So, all right. So you have that nationalist baggage in Russia. They're not right in my mind, but they carry it. And again, if there are things that need to be redressed, you don't do it through military force, full stop. Um, but it's made it very, very difficult, especially now as we are in the process of having to reinforce. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The Russians come up and they start putting troops up along here. They make our allies nervous. So we go into the into these countries to show them support, even if it's small forces and defensive. The Russians say, oh, you know, you got American vehicles in the Baltics, just 100 miles from St. Petersburg, you know? And that's another thing. The Russians look at the world as buffer zones. And when, when Russia fell, when, um, when the Soviet Union fell, all of this became independent, but they wanted to keep it in the orbit and the Warsaw Pact part of their buffer zone all fell to include East Germany. Now all of a sudden NATO is 100 miles from beautiful St. Petersburg. So I'm just trying to put you in their, 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 
you know, there, there can be very, very geocentric, uh, old world, look at the map like red and blue, and they see NATO encroaching. They see U.S. forces trying to help the Ukrainians as part of a plot to bring NATO, Ukraine into, into, into um, NATO, which is not the plan. Um, uh, and then remember that we were in Georgia, you know, working with the Georgians. And, and again, so when you, when you look at Russian geography, you've got this going on, you've got all this. One of the paradoxes of Central Asia was that while we were there in the good days of uh, my time in Moscow, the better days are never good, we, we agreed that Afghanistan was going to be a problem. The Russians were very concerned and wanted to work in cooperation to prevent the foreign fighters and, 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 and militant Islam because this is a soft underbelly for Russia. Again, very, very lightly populated. Then Caucasus, they've got Chechnya there. They've got a, they've got a puppet state in Chechnya now who is actually uh, very loyal to Putin, uh, but it's a mutually usurious relationship, one to watch. His name is Kad K Rama, um, Razdan uh, Kadrov, fascinating. Um, and, um, um, and so, and you've got, an, you've got a, you've got a um, in, insurgency in Dagestan, a low level insurgency. So, why the problems? Why are you making problems with the West? It, it, stop. The West doesn't want to fight. We want to trade. You know, the EU, they see the EU in a zero sum. My God, the EU is going to come into the Ukraine, which is what precipitated the crisis. And, um, um, and, and, and we, you would want to say, Russia, the EU on your border is going to help your economy. No, it's the foreground, the vanguard of NATO. Okay? So this country lost all these countries 25 years ago. And Josh and I were there at the beginning back when it was more optimistic. And so I would say that the Russians are defensive, they're strategically defensive, they're preemptive, they're, they're very suspicious, um, reactive. Uh, it's an angry foreign policy. And, and uh, they don't want, the, and they feel that their interests have been infringed upon uh, across their periphery. Demographics, tell me what the population of Russia is today. About 150 million. Pardon? 150 million. Yeah, 145, 150 million. Nobody exactly knows. What's our population? What, 320, something like that? And then the west of Europe and rest of Europe and all that. You have Russia, this vast nation covering 11 time zone with 145 million people. 80% of them that are concentrated in the west of the Ural Mountains. And this is vast and not undergoverned, but underpopulated. Um, it's going to create a problem. Also in the south, the nature of the population is changing. You're getting increased, and my wife Stephanie and I would see this increasingly in Moscow. Um, many of the workers, the laborers, are now from uh, Central Asia and the Caucasus. Um, so the so Russia is changing in the in, in also in its population. The up until a few years ago, the death rate, horrible health, and everything else out out um, outpaced the uh, birth rate. It's a little bit better now, but they think in 20 years that birth age women are going to be uh, in a mino, are going to be a challenge, and so they're going to see another dip. So you've got all this going on. You've got a mono economy. You've got oil, you know, a lot of it up here. And you see the Chinese are already working their deals. Um, and, and, it's, and, and while it, the prices, they still, you know, it's still very, very rich. But over time, they're going to have to move up increasingly into the tundra, into the permafrost. It's going to get increasingly to, difficult to mine, which is why we have to watch the Arctic, all right? Because there's a lot of uh, uh, oil up there, in theory. We and the other Arctic nations, to include Russia, the, I think it's the Arctic Eight, will figure out a way to work peacefully up there and sort it all out. Um, so so uh, this vast country is the Eurasian country. There it is on the Pacific Ocean. There it is with access to, uh, to the Atlantic um, uh, and Europe. And um, um, it, is, it is vast, it is complex, 
um, and, and um, multifaceted. It, I mean, it's fascinating. Uh, uh, to close, um, the West again, and, 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 and stay with me here on, on Russia, and why could, are they, again, so obsessed? Why, why can't we work our way out of this, this uh, cul-de-sac with Russia as far as the West? And this is a woman in, in Western Russia, older woman, almost 80, 85 years old, um, um, little girl during World War II, Great Patriotic War, and we were talking about, she pulled me aside and said, General, remember that during the life, my lifetime, the lifetime of my parents, that Nazi jackboots were on the throats of our villages and towns all throughout European Russia and Ukraine, Soviet Union, for over three years, and over 25 million of our country people unnaturally died. War is horrible. It was bad for us as Americans. Um, 25 million people uh, died at the hands of the war, the Nazis, and the Axis. Um, now, that's just not the war. Again, and most of this is the West or self-inflicted. If you go back to 1914, World War One, that didn't go well for the Russians, unless you're a Bolshevik. And they lose a million there, and then you have the this. Uh, then you have the Russian Revolution and an absolute barbarous uh, nationwide civil war. And then on top of that, talk about cutting these people some slack. And you know, you're talking about these the innocents out there. And the, you have a man-made, primarily Stalin famine that kills three to five million people. Knows nobody knows the number. And then in 1937 and 38, um, um, a good chunk of your officer car and in, 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 in intelligentsia are shot in the back of the head or sent.